My name is Charles Perry, and it's my pleasure today to inform you of this technology that has been developed here at the Engineering Technology Department of Middle Tennessee State University. This is a plug-in hybrid retrofit kit that enables us to add plug-in hybrid capability to almost any car. I hesitate to say 100%, but most cars are adaptable to this technology. What happens is we add electric traction to the car, we install a battery in the trunk with its controls, and the car becomes a plug-in hybrid. That's right, any car can become a plug-in hybrid. The most difficult aspect of this technology is how do you add electric traction? This invention, which is four patents pending at the U.S. Patent Office, is an invention of myself and also Mr. Paul Martin, who worked here for several years and is left to take a position in industry. But Mr. Martin and I are co-inventors of this technology, and the unique part of this technology is that we use the space in the inner rear wheel to package an electric motor. Let's take a closer look at the electric motor. The real innovation in this technology of being able to convert any car to a plug-in hybrid automobile is how do you add electric traction? There have been many approaches to this. Some of them involve interrupting the drive shaft if it's a rear wheel car. Others use a technique where they drive through the lug nuts. But we wanted a technique by which it was transparent visually and also performance wise. So what we have done is taken the space that exists around the rear wheel brake structure and packaged a DC brushless motor. Now, in this application, what we have done is taken the suspension components on this car, a 94 Honda, and we have packaged the stator magnets all the way around the back side of the rotor. These are electromagnets that switch on and off at the proper intervals as controlled by three Hall effect sensors. This is a three-phase DC brushless motor for maximum amount of torque. The permanent magnets are on the back side of this rotor. There's an array of permanent magnets, 40 permanent magnets on this rotor, and when the system is actuated, this turns into a DC brushless motor with 200 foot-pounds of torque. There's one on each side of the car. I'm going to have the motor turned on now so you can see how it rotates. Go ahead and turn it on. Now this is in static operation. In actual operation, you start accelerating with the car, then the traction motors turn on and supplement or augment the electric, the traction provided by the gasoline engine, thereby reducing the amount of gasoline required. In actual operation, this system will double your mileage in town. So you see it's, and both sides are running, both sides are identical. All right, you can turn the motor off now, thank you. This technology is designed for around the town usage. There's a well-known statistic that on any given day in the United States, 80% of us drive 40 miles or less at 45 miles an hour or less. That is the market that this is designed to go for. That the, those of us who just drive around town. What happens when you get out on interstate and go above a certain uh, miles per hour, the system will automatically cut off and becomes transparent. When the system is not operating, the wheel turns just like it normally does and you don't even know it's there. Packaging of this motor without modifying the wheel mounts on the car, just as you see, this is the rotor. This is what we've added. It wraps around the brake structure and then we just add the wheel and the car operates as normal. Now let's consider the battery pack and the controllers that are mounted in the back of this vehicle. Like any plug-in hybrid, it requires a battery and a controller and an operating system to control it. In this application, we have a lithium-ion phosphate battery here in the rear of this 94 Honda wagon that's rated for 80 volts and 100 amps. It supplies the power to each of the DC brushless traction motors that we discussed just a moment ago. This particular application, we use two DC brushless motor controllers mounted on the back of the battery pack. This particular system is larger than it needs to be because this is a research vehicle and we designed it to get the data and operation so we put a little larger battery than we really need in the actual operation I mentioned it'll be about the size of a carry-on bag for an aircraft. So this control system turns the uh, motors on and off automatically 
We designed it specifically not to interact with the engine management system on the car. It operates independently. If you were to drive this car and you didn't know it had the plug-in hybrid system on it, you would, it would be totally transparent. You, all you would notice is that when you take off, you may notice you don't have to press the accelerator quite as far because the electric traction comes on and augments the power needed to accelerate. That's the whole principle of how this works. Also augments the amount of traction you need to maintain velocity, say at 35 or 40 miles an hour. As I mentioned earlier, in hybrid mode, which we have proved with this laboratory prototype, it doubles the mileage while you're in hybrid mode. So this, nearly none, this is all off-the-shelf components. There's really no great innovation in the battery or the controllers. These are off-the-shelf components. As I mentioned earlier, the innovation that is patented is how we add the electric traction.